8265, which is 60 years prior to Nicaea. Gregory has this, one Holy Spirit. So you have one God, one Lord, one Holy Spirit. That's New Testament language. Uh, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 8. That's, that's highly developed long before Nicaea. One Holy Spirit having substantial existence from God. Ektheu tain huparksen ekon. So that's a, again, that is a, an assertion that is going to be not fleshed out, but um, discussed much more a hundred and 100 to 120 years in the future. The Cappadocians are going to be developing stuff like that. One Holy Spirit having substantial existence from God manifested through the Son Perfect image of the perfect Son, living cause of living things, sanctity and provider of sanctification, by whom God the Father is manifested, who is over all and in all, and God the Son, who is through all. Now, you could say, and, and, and then the last phrase, trios talia, perfect trinity, in glory and eternity and kingdom, not divided and not alienated. All right, so remember, the whole reason we pointed this out was Dale Tuggy was saying, yeah, Council of Nicaea 325, those where you really start getting your first Trinitarian stuff, and this is as Trinitarian as it gets. Now, he has his excuses, he wants to use certain language, fine, whatever. Unitarians are Unitarians, I, I don't... They're not going anywhere. Um, but you could say, well, you know, certainly there's more that could be said. Well, sure, but for a confession of faith in 265, prior to the rise of Arius, now remember, in church history, when you have a, what we would call, heresy arise, very often, this leads to the greatest clarification of the issues that were brought up before. So, Arius comes along, and because Arius is defending himself and defending his assertion there was a time when the sun was not, um, that leads to clearer expressions of the truth because now you have something to define the truth against, you see. And until that comes up, sometimes you just don't have the same level of clarity as you do when it's after it's been denied. So this is before Arius. In fact, in the East, especially, what they're, what they're fighting at this time is monarchianism. They're, they're, they're fighting a form of modalism. And yet you have still very clear language being used here. So, one Holy Spirit having substantial existence from God, so not a creature, manifested through the Son. So, existence from God, manifestation through the Son, Perfect image of the perfect son. So there seems to be, in Gregory's mind, a revelatory frame here. Where the son is the perfect revealer of the father, and now the, the, the spirit is the perfect revealer of the son. Um, living cause of living things, clearly. Genesis 1, spirit involved in creation. Um, Numa breath of life, sanctity and provider of sanctification. That's straight out of the central aspect of the Spirit's role in bringing about sanctification to the believer's life. That's Pauline theology, very, very clearly expressed. By whom God the Father is manifested, so Spirit's necessary action of opening hearts and minds, understanding, who is overall in all, Description of God the Father there. And God the Son, who is through all. So that's 
similar language to what you find in Colossians and in 1 Corinthians and Romans, for that matter. Though Paul does interchange a lot of those prepositions between father and son. But it's the Spirit who brings this to life amongst believers. And so that again is an amazingly full uh, pneumatology at this very early period of time prior to Nicaea and at a time when the East is primarily the ones fighting against um, dynamic monarchianism and Sabellianism and the various forms of what today would be described as oneness theology though that's anachronistic to put it that way. Perfect Trinity and glory and eternity and kingdom not divided and not alienated. That's beautiful. And so here on this program, starting, because we started looking at this on our the, the first stop on my road trip. So I was in Munns Park, just south of Flagstaff, Arizona. I can tell you where I was now. Um, and... Uh, that's where we started this. So I've sort of picked at it for the past number of weeks. But keep that in mind. Make a note of this. So that when people tell you stuff like Dale Tuggy said, or like the Muslims will say, um, it's getting to go back to the realities, get, go back to the original sources is the best way to deal with that kind of stuff is just say, nope, don't think so. Look right here. And um, it's right there. Uh, in fact, I'm going to use this. Uh, um, I linked to it on, I think, oh, I, I did put it on um, Theology Matters. Um, the recording of the little talk that I gave up in Las Vegas, which I'm going to be doing again in the future uh, because everybody seemed to enjoy it. And I, and I enjoyed it where I just went through, I had, I had some idea of who I was going to talk about. I had a few quotes, uh, in a, in a file, but I still had plenty of freedom to just go wherever I wanted to go and talk about individuals from church history. I'm going to throw Gregory in there and I'm going to use this, uh, just so people can get an idea that, uh, Christians have had these incredible beliefs that we have from the start, from the start. That's just the reality. 